When we talked with Replit about how they built their agent, one of the things that they highlighted was the importance of human in the loop. And so you can see here on the side that they're showing a conversation of what's happening, but they're also letting the user approve the plan. And so this human in the loop interaction pattern is something that we've seen become really important and really common when building complex agent applications. And we've made LangGraph really, really good for these human in the loop interactions. And today we're adding a new tool called interrupt to make it even easier. So let's take a look at that. To maybe set the stage a bit, the reason that LangGraph is so well built for human in the loop interaction patterns is the persistence layer that it's built on. So when you use LangGraph, if you pass in a check pointer, then what happens is that between each step, the state of the graph is read from the checkpoint and then written to the checkpoint when it ends. This means that you can stop execution anywhere and you can then resume an arbitrary time length later because you have that checkpoint, you have that exact state of the graph at that period of time. It also means that the human can edit that checkpoint, update it, add some different values, and then restart the graph from that new updated edited checkpoint. You can think of it almost as a scratch pad for human agent collaboration. So for everything that I'm gonna talk about, this is enabled by the persistence layer that's a core part of LangGraph and has been from the beginning. The new functionality we're adding is this interrupt function. This function's kind of similar to the input function in Python. So what it means is that inside a node, you can use interrupt and you can pass in any data into interrupt. That'll be saved as part of the persistence layer and the node will be interrupted right there. You can then re-invoke the graph and I'll show how to do that in a bit. And when you get back the result, that'll be written as this value. This is very similar to how input works in Python. The main difference is that while input is really useful for when you're running a graph in memory, in a CLI, in a notebook, it doesn't really work in production at all. Interrupt does. So once you have this node where you're using interrupt, you can then build your graph. Notice that you will need to pass in a check pointer because this relies on that persistence layer. You can invoke it the first time, pass in anything, and then it will eventually interrupt it there. And then you can resume by passing in this command thing with the value that you want to be written to this value. So let's take a look at this in a little bit more detail and see it in action. Let's take a look at a really simple graph here that shows off how to use interrupt. So I'm using the state graph, I'm using message state. I only have one node, it's this human node. What I'm gonna do inside this node is I'm gonna use interrupt. Into interrupt, I'm gonna pass this string. The string is gonna be formatted with the messages that are in the state up to that point in time. I'm gonna get back this value from interrupt and I'm gonna update the state based on that value. So I'm gonna make this an AI message. I'm gonna build this graph. I'm gonna use my check pointer. It's an in-memory check pointer. I'm gonna create this graph. I'm gonna add a node. It's this only node. I'm gonna set it as the entry point. I'm gonna build it going to create this thread config and then I'm going to invoke it with the initial messages. So role user content high. Great. Let's now get the state of the graph at this point in time. We can see that so far the state values are just a single message. It's just human message. It's what I passed in. We can see that there are a few tasks on the state. Well, there's one task on the state and this task has some interrupts, one interrupt. And this interrupt is the value that I passed in earlier. What should I say in response to, and then this is this is the state that I, that I formatted into the string. So this shows that this thread at this point in time is interrupted. And in that interrupt, I have information about why it's interrupted. And so you can put anything in this interrupt value that helps communicate to the end user why it is interrupted and how they should respond. And here is what it looks like to respond. So I'm gonna respond with the command tool and we introduced this a few days ago. I'm gonna pass in resume. And then how, how is it going? This is gonna be the value that will get saved right there. So I'm gonna pass that in and then the graph is gonna finish. And I can see that it added here this AI message 
with the content, how's it going? This is what I passed in. This is what got saved to value. And in turn, this is what updated the state. So this is a really simple example of how interrupt works in practice. Let's now talk about some common use cases for this. So first is kind of like an approve or reject step. The LLM makes some decision. This can either just be a response or it can be a function call and the human approves it. If it approves it, then it goes to some node or it rejects it. If it rejects it, it goes to a different node. This is a pretty common pattern. Another one is reviewing and editing the state. This is a little bit more involved. So now you have the state of the graph. And so it could be the response of an LLM or it could be documents or it could be anything. And the human's gonna go in, they're gonna review that whole state. And then they're gonna pass in some information that's gonna update that state optionally. And then after that's done, it will go to the next node. So this is useful for correcting mistakes. So this can be useful for correcting mistakes or updating the state with additional information. This is kind of similar to the previous use case of approve or reject, but just calling it out that reviewing tool calls is one of the main use cases for human in the loop that we see. So the LLM may generate a tool call or multiple tool calls with multiple arguments and having the human in the loop to decide whether that tool call is correct and whether it should be executed can be really, really important, particularly in critical applications where the tool calls requested by the LLM may be sensitive or require human oversight. Finally, this can be a useful design pattern for your, when you're building multi-turn conversations in multi-agent setups. So if you're doing a multi-turn conversation with a single agent, then you can just use the persistence layer as normal and use the memory that way. When you're doing a multi-turn conversation with multiple agents, then it's often nice to have a human node and just interrupt there rather than finishing the graph run. Because then after that human node, you know exactly where you are in any of the three or four, however many agents you have, and you can return to that agent after you respond rather than having to do some routing at the beginning. Note that for all of these use cases, the human in the loop interaction pattern can be done either by the end user or by a third party who's kind of like reviewing and monitoring the system. So there's a lot of optionality here. We think human in the loop design patterns are crucial for building reliable and useful agents. We want Langraph to be the best place to build these types of human in the loop agents. So please check this out and let us know if you have any feedback. Thanks for watching.